the most important thing in Smash has always been movement. The more flexible options you have, the better you can maneuver around your opponent, and the more likely you become to win. Everything ties back to how well you can position your character, and thus, the community is always searching for the next big movement tech. Melee had wave dashing and dash dancing, Brawl had Dacus, and Smash 4 had perfect pivots, but Ultimate has, thus far, proven fairly resilient to the community's efforts to innovate. There are some niche options for certain characters, but we have yet to tap into any truly universal movement tech. This isn't an accident. The dev team has taken very direct action to be sure movement is limited to the intended way and nothing beyond that. Not only are all the previous techs out, even something as fundamental as dashing has become one of the most committal options available. But what if I told you there's already a movement tech in Ultimate that's been vastly underutilized? One that not only radically impacts the flow of the fight, but something that's been a powerful and often overlooked option since Smash's inception. I'm Glyph Money, and this is how to make something out of nothing. But first, let's set the stage for why this has flown under the radar for so long. Smash's competitive origins began with Melee, a game that's become iconic for its freedom of movement. Between the juggernauts of dash dancing and wave dashing, you could put yourself into a state where you have access to the entirety of your character's moveset while still being in motion. Because of this, there really isn't a reason for you to not be constantly pushing a button. This makes fights in melee advance at a breakneck pace, but this comes at a cost. By freeing up movement, it heavily biases the game towards characters that are built around speed. Having your movement untethered means something very different to Captain Falcon than it does to Bowser. For better or for worse, Melee set the pace for Smash going forward. Many fans have been chasing that high for well over a decade now, trying to push each following game to the limits of its engine. Yet, with every new game, movement options have become more and more restricted. Now, why is that? Well, we can only speculate, but the pattern seems to indicate an attempt to push players to move quote-unquote normally. It isn't normal to vibrate in place or slide around on the ground, even if it's more advantageous from a competitive perspective. And it is here that we finally arrive at the point of this video. See, as the cost of movement becomes more and more restricted, a strange phenomenon starts to emerge. Suddenly, doing nothing at all starts to hold more and more value. Wait, wait though, how can doing nothing be beneficial? You're never going to win a fight unless you're engaging with your opponent, right? Well, of course, but it's a bit more nuanced than that. While fast-paced, any given interaction in Smash can be boiled down to key choices and specific moments. You see, neutral plays up like a conversation. Your actions inform your opponents, who in turn informs your own. But watch what happens when you break that chain. Suddenly, your opponent who has been basing their options off of yours finds themselves at a standstill, and much like a real conversation, people naturally act to fill that lull. In many situations, it is much more beneficial to be the one reacting to your opponent's choices than being the one making the commitments. And forcing your opponent to make a move can create openings that otherwise wouldn't exist. Doing nothing in neutral can even be relevant at a distance. Trap-based characters often desperately need you to approach them at specific times for their kits to work most efficiently, and simply refusing to engage that situation can rob them of a huge portion of their strategy. But doing nothing isn't only valuable in neutral. It has potential in any possible game state. Let's look at one of the most common parts of being in disadvantage first, the ledge. Here, there is a very limited number of options you can select. Realistically, you have jump, roll, attack, neutral get up, or ledge hop. Most players have a preferred option they choose here, meaning that seasoned opponents will pick up free kills once they identify that habit. But what if instead of choosing one of those options, you chose to do nothing at all? Now your opponent has committed to covering an option before you make your move, meaning you're free to select a safe choice and get your footing back on stage. Timing the weighted ledge is an art form, as your invincibility is limited. Just as an opponent can track you choosing the jump from ledge, they can track that you weighted ledge as well. However, even a small delay in your choice can be enough to draw an early response from your opponent, which is really all you need here. We just looked at doing nothing in disadvantage, so now let's look at its use in advantage state. 
There is a very well-known tech in the Smash world called the Tomahawk Grab, where a player jumps in at their opponent to draw out their shield, but lands and goes into a grab instead. The power of this tech comes from what is known as an empty hop, a jump with no attack. On its own, that would seem utterly pointless. Jumping doesn't do damage, but the jump itself was never the point. No, the purpose of an empty hop is the threat of an attack. Barring a few exceptions, most characters do not have any form of grab they can activate in the air. This makes jumping convey a clear message to your opponent. I'm coming for you, and I'm going to do bodily harm to you when I get there. Being someone who doesn't like to be punched, your opponent will no doubt throw up their shield to prevent that attack, but that attack never comes. Now, that's not quite all there is to this. This is only effective if your opponent truly believes you're going to attack them. And that can only happen after you've given them a reason to feel that way. Okay, now let's really start to dig into this concept. People have a tendency to see situations as very black and white, but like so many other things in life, your options in Smash exist on a spectrum. Take, for example, being caught in a combo. Players in this position tend to ask one major question. Should I be DIing in or out? But that's only two far extremes of what you could be choosing here. See, no DI at all is just as valid of an option, as is any combination of the three. That's the beauty of movement in Smash. You have that flexibility to change as the situation calls for it. Now, the game is built in a way that in most cases, it really is most effective to commit to either in or out. But in particular for combo-based characters like Bayonetta or Luigi, it is critical that you learn to switch between them as needed. Showing an opponent that you're DIing out will force them to cover that option, meaning that switching to in will potentially save your life by positioning you somewhere they didn't anticipate. This is an incredibly powerful tool once you realize just how far-reaching this concept goes. There are many, many instances of what people call 50-50s in this game, be that DIing in versus DIing out, jump or air dodge, or the one I'm personally most familiar with, fast versus slow mash. Let's take a look at the context that I work with the most here, that being the berry mechanic. Specifically, let's look at King K Rule's down throw. On the surface, my opponent here has two options. They can mash quickly, which I cover with up smash, or they can not mash at all, which I cover with down angled forward tilt. It's a coin flip, and one that you can cheat when the game actually shows you if they're mashing or not. However, there is a huge spectrum between the two extremes. You see, this was never a 50-50 at all. Fastest and no mash just happen to be the most accessible and familiar options. The gray space between them is significantly more difficult to reliably cover, as they can pop out too late for the up smash, but also too soon for the forward tilt. Now, consider what happens when you don't take action here at all. If your opponent is a fast masher, odds are good that you weren't actually going to kill them off that down throw anyway. And if they don't mash, well, they learn they probably should mash next time. Either way, you get to see their option, but they don't get to see yours. Now, the next time you find yourself in the same situation, you already know what their gut reaction is, while they still have to guess for yours. This may not seem like a huge deal, but it gives you tremendous leverage if you can use it to predict their next option. In the same vein as this, your options for things like DI and positioning are never quite so binary. There's a difference between holding in as much as possible and only holding in for a brief time. And knowing how to use these options between the far extremes can be what decides the victor of a fight. So, what's the point of all this? If there's one thing you should take away from this video, it would be to make sure that you're taking purposeful actions. Just because movement looks good doesn't make it a smart thing to be doing, and it can even be your undoing when you're trying to force it where it doesn't belong. In any competitive situation, not just in Smash, one of the best paths for victory is to outthink your opponent. The more rigid your timings, the easier they'll pick up on your habits, and the more often you'll find yourself getting outplayed. Find that untapped space between the options you're selecting, and you'll discover pathways to victory that would never exist otherwise. Thanks a bunch for watching, and it's been Glyph Money.